now we are in the small network regime where the objective is not only to get as much accuracy as possible, but at the same time to be efficient in terms of memory and computation. And so far, we saw two methods of doing it. One is knowledge distillation, where you have a huge network and you distill the knowledge into a smaller network. And basically you're training your small network using the data generated from the giant network. The other one is you start with a pre-trained network. You first prune it, you retrain, then you quantize it, then you retrain, and then you use Hoffman coding uh, to store your numbers, your centroids more efficiently, and then you end up with a compressed network, which you can employ on your uh, devices, on your smaller devices. Any questions about these two frameworks? Okay, there is another approach is that you start with a network and you try to design it efficiently from scratch. You don't start from a pre-trained network, but uh, you start with a network that is small already and then try to optimize that and train that network. And there are a bunch of rules that we're gonna follow for designing such a network. And one of them, I'm sure you're gonna guess, how can we make neural networks actually convolutions more efficient? What is the computational bottleneck when it comes to convolution? Can somebody answer? Memory bandwidth? I'm actually looking for uh, another answer in terms of mathematically. What is the most computational number of parameters? And the number of parameters are governed by what? Okay, that's great. One of them is the number of channels that you have. Basically, the number of feature maps that you have, that's correct. Size of the image is important. What else? And the size of the kernel, exactly. So the bigger the size, the more parameters you're going to need. The bigger the number of feature maps, uh, the more parameters you're going to need. So this paper is based on those observations. It's very similar to the observations that we made earlier when we were doing inception inception modules. And how can we reduce the number of feature maps? We can do dimensionality reduction. And how do we reduce the dimension? One by one convolutions, exactly. So let's try to do that in this paper. Let's say X is the input to a layer of your, of a convolutional layer. X is an input. It has height and width and channel. We do the convolution and we end up with Y, the output of the convolutional layer. And let's say we are doing padding appropriately so that we are going to end up with this same height and width and we are not doing any striding and we are going to end up with f feature maps from c we are going to f the size of your convolution the first thing to note is that its number of parameters is not the function of h and w it has its own kernel size which you can slide over your image so it doesn't depend on h and w but uh, the size of the weights depends on the input channels and the number of output channels. We're still doing a matrix multiplication from C to F. So there are a couple of strategies that this paper follows. One is that it's gonna replace three by three filters with one by one filters. That is strategy one. Strategy two is the most important one. You decrease the number of input channels whenever you have a three by three convolution. Before you do your three by three convolution, you decrease the number of input channels using a one by one convolution. Strategy, strategy three, you downsample late in the network. And by downsampling, I mean uh, using a strides. This will allow your convolutions to have larger activation maps. This is for you to increase the accuracy. So the paper is gonna follow three strategies and all of those strategies are gonna show up in the fire module. At least the first two are gonna show up in the fire module. So don't be afraid of the word fire. I don't know why they're using it. But what's gonna happen is that you first squeeze the dimension, the number of channels, using one by one convolutional filters. Here, this length that you're seeing, if we go back to the math on top, has size C. So this is a C-dimensional vector. This is another C-dimensional vector. And let's say you have F of them, one, two, three of them. So we are going to introduce a notation. S one by one is the number of filters that you're gonna have, number of one by one filters. In this case, you have three filters, and these three corresponds to that F up there. That's the number of filters that you have. And the vector size is corresponding to this C here, the number of channels, input channels. You first squeeze, 
Now you're reducing the dimension to three. You do a ReLU and then do, you do your expansion. Here is where strategy one comes into place. You're replacing a couple of your, or a handful of your convolutions, three by three convolutions with one by one convolutions. And the other one is that you're keeping three by three convolution. A little bit more notation, E one by one is the number of one by one convolutions in the expansion layer. So we have four of them now. E three by three is the number of three by three convolutions in the expansion layer. And S one by one was the number of one by one convolutional filters in the squeeze part of the network. So that's a fire module. That's a definition of a fire module. And this is what I was just explaining. S one by one is the number of one by one filters. E one by one, E three by three. And according to a strategy two, we want S one by one to be less than, because we want to decrease the number of inputs to three by three channels. This has to be less than the number of uh, filters that you have in the expansion layer. So you first squeeze and then you expand. So it's very similar to inception. So let's see some results. You start with a vanilla squeeze net, and then you're gonna end up with these accuracies, and that's the model size. And simple bypass and complex bypass are just uh, residual connections. A simple bypass is just you're adding x plus to the plus the output of your block. For complex, you are first multiplying by a matrix because the dimensions don't match, and then you want to match the dimensions. The idea is that simple bypass also works. What is the overall architecture? What we covered here for the fire module is a micro structure. This is the macro structure of the network. At the macro level, you first do a convolution and then you do max pooling with a stride of two. Then you do a bunch of fire modules and another max pooling, fire module, another max pooling, and a stride of two, fire module, a convolution, you end up with 1,000 outputs and then you do global average pooling and then soft max. So the ideas of this paper are very similar to Inception. Okay, let's compare it to AlexNet. AlexNet, when you don't do any compressions at all and you use data type of 32, that's the size of your model, 24D. And then the reduction in model size with respect to AlexNet is one because AlexNet is gonna be our baseline. We are comparing everything to AlexNet. AlexNet compares to, compared to AlexNet has a reduction of one. And these are the top one and top five accuracy that you achieve on ImageNet. You can do SVD, singular value decomposition. And can somebody explain what that is? So the matrices in your convolutions, basically whatever weights that you have, you can decompose it using a singular value decomposition. It's going to be our orthogonal matrix times a diagonal matrix times the same orthogonal matrix transpose. Or it could be uh, an orthonormal matrix times a diagonal matrix times another matrix that is still orthonormal. And then what you do is that those diagonal entries are going to correspond to your singular values. I think they're going to be a square root of your eigenvalues. And then you keep the maximum of them. Maybe the first 10 maximums are going to be explaining most of your matrix. And that's the way that you're gonna compress your matrix. Is that clear? Okay, perfect. So you do SVD. Yes, it's very similar to PCA. And you reduce, you compress your network from 240 to 48. You do five times reduction, but then you lose accuracy. Then if you do network pruning, it's the paper from last session. Only network pruning is gonna give you nine times reduction, same accuracy as before. You can do deep compression. It's exactly what we saw last session. That's gonna give you 35 times reduction in your model size, same accuracy. Now let's see what a squeeze net is gonna buy us. Squeeze net without any compression using 32 bits is still gonna give us a huge reduction, basically 50 times reduction, slightly better accuracy, actually for top, top, top one error or top one accuracy, it's gonna give you a slightly better accuracy. And then what you do is you're gonna do deep compression on a squeeze net, and that's gonna give you a huge reduction. So the take home message from this table is that deep compression and uh, what we just saw with fire module 
are two orthogonal approaches. They are not complementary. You can do one and then do the other one on top of the first one. They are not redundant because they are two totally different approaches. So you can start with a network that is already squeezed and then compress it even further. We are going to introduce some meta parameters because we are going to have different devices and we want to be able to control the size of the model using some meta parameters and you're going to see what they are. So what we are going to do is introduce EI. It's equal to base E. I'm going to explain what that is. And then we are going to increment the number of fire modules, actually the number of expand filters, the number of expand filters by this increment, every frequency, that's just a constant, fire modules. What do I mean? Every, I don't know, every two fire module, skip one, skip fire three, at this fire module, increase the number of expand filters in this fire module. Then skip fire five, in fire six, increase the number of expand filters, basically the number of filters that you have in this green uh, curve by increment. So increment is going to be a parameter. It's going to be a hyperparameter. And what is EI? EI is basically the number of one by one and number of three by three convolutions, convolutional filters added together. It's whatever that you have in this uh, green curve. That's EI. What is B base E? is the number of expand filters in the first fire module. You start with base E, that's the number of filters that you had here, that's your base. And then you keep incrementing it, I don't know, every two fire module or every three fire module. And how do you uh, divide the number of EI? How many of them should be three by three filters and how many of them should be one by one filters? You're gonna define another hyperparameter, another meta parameter. And that's going to be your percentage. It's the percentage of three by three. That's a meta parameter. And then one minus percentage of three by three is one by one. And then if you add these two together, that's going to give you back EI. And we are going to introduce another meta parameter and that's a squeeze ratio. How much you want to squeeze. And that's uh, basically defining the number of one by one convolution. That's the ratio of one by one convolutions and the number of expand filters. So are we okay in terms of definitions? So what I'm doing now is defining a couple of concepts. One is increment E, which is how much you want to increment the number of your expand filters. And we are introducing percentage and a squeeze ratio. It's nothing hard. It's just definitions of how we want to parameterize the structure of uh, our network. What is it going to buy you? It's going to help you control the size of your models, 4.8, 13, 19, so you can control it, you can control the size. And of course, if you increase the capacity of your model, you're going to end up with a higher accuracy. And what we are changing here is the squeeze ratio. On top, that's the squeeze ratio. And the axis on the, the vertical axis is just the accuracy that you're going to achieve. And that's just the corresponding model size. What we are going to change on the figure on the right is the percentage of three by three filters. So on the figure on the right, we are changing this parameter. And on the figure on the left, we are changing SR. And with these two parameters, you can control the size of your model. Depending on the target device, you can choose either this model or that model or the other model. Does this make sense? Okay, perfect. Are there any questions before I move to the next slide? So in a uh, sort of big picture, the, the idea of squeezing and expanding isn't anything new, but is, is sort of the novelty of this paper, the, the ratios of everything that they introduce? One of the novelties is these meta parameters, definitely, how you parameterize your model. And in terms of the fire module, I don't know whether this paper came first or the inception paper came first, but the ideas are very similar. The idea of using one by one convolutions to do dimensionality reduction, and then combining one by one and three by three convolution. But the inception module had something more. It was doing some pooling, some five by five convolutions, and then it was doing seven by one, and one by seven. Any cool, other thanks. Questions? Okay, cool.